This past weekend, my wife and I traveled to Boise, Idaho to attend a multi-day Christian conference, and it was it was wonderful. I met such amazing people, and and we shared our faith together, our common faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great and, and wonderful thing that was. But but the conference didn't end until after a concert Saturday night, and by the time we got home, it was it was so late. It was it was so late. We went to bed and and the next morning, well, it was just a few hours later that we would have had to get up to go to church and instead we we remained in bed. As the day wore on, I was feeling a little bit of loss. I love to worship with my friends. I love to raise my voice and sing praises to God. I love to hear the sermons and talk about Christ. I love the Bible study. I love everything about Sunday. And I had missed out, and I was feeling a little bit hungry because of that. So I got to thinking. Some five or six weeks ago, I was talking to my grandchildren. Now these are 13-year-old Reagan, 12-year-old Tierney, and nine-year-old Scully. These are amazing kids, and and I talked to them about the importance of always having something ready to share about Jesus at any time for anyone. Well, it's like it says in 1 Peter, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. You see, I think it's important that we always have something that we can share with people immediately. And and it got me to thinking about my grandkids and about my conversation with them, which, like I said, happened some five or six weeks ago. And I thought, I'm going to call and test them a little bit, see if they actually have followed through on what we said and, and what we had talked about. And honestly, I... I didn't expect that they would because kids are kids. So I telephoned, and nine-year-old Scully picked up the phone. He said, hey, Grandpa. I said, hey, buddy, how you doing? And and I talked to him about missing church, and he knew we had missed church because he he and I, we, we worship in the same place. So that little rascal Scully, he uh, kind of held me accountable a little bit. He wanted to know why Grandpa wasn't where he ought to be. And so I explained the situation, and he accepted that. And then I said, but Scully, I didn't get to hear any good sermons today. I didn't get what I, what I wanted today, and, and because of that, I'm feeling a little bit sad. I said, do you have a sermon ready for me? And he said, I do, I do. And I said, great, and, and he turned around and he yelled to his family, where's my Bible? <laughs> and as he started to go find his Bible, I said, Scully, Scully, ask your sisters if they're ready too. And so I heard him shout out to his sisters, Grandpa's ready for a sermon. And then you hear this running and clatter around the house as they're all rushing around trying to find their Bibles so that they can come and share their faith with me. Reagan uh, was the first one to get back to the phone, just 13 years old and such a precious, precious daughter or granddaughter. He's, she's amazing and she has such a heart for Jesus and a heart for other people. And so she was the first one on the phone. I guess she found her Bible more easily than the other kids who had probably dropped them in the clothes hamper or under the bed or (laughs) forgot where they laid them, as kids do. Anyway, she came back and she said, Okay, Grandpa, turn with me to Matthew 6. So I did, and she began, Quote, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret and your Father 
who sees in secret will reward you. Reagan continued, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you that they have received their reward, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I thought this was a great message from my dear granddaughter, and we took a minute and, and talked about it, talked about what it really means to give to others and to pray to our Father, our God, in a way that would please Him. And as I questioned her, I was amazed at her insight. You see, she understands. She takes her Bible with her to school, and during the free period, she reads the Bible to the amazement of the other kids who say, why, can you, why do you read that and how can you possibly understand? As I questioned her, it was evident. She understands. Next up was Scully. He uh, came to the phone and he said, Grandpa, I'm ready. And I said, good, what are we reading? He said, Matthew 22. I said, okay. And I turned there with him. He read, starting in verse 36, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. I said, Wow, Scully, awesome sermon. Pastor Scully, wow, that's amazing. And he's so young. I, I had to ask, how did you find this, Scully? This is an awesome passage. Where did you find it? He said, I just was reading the Bible and I liked this one. <laughs> is that amazing? I said to him, what do you think it means that all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments? And he said, I'm not sure, but I liked it anyway. And so we talked a little bit about that. And he quickly understood that for God... The most important thing we can do is to love him and to love our neighbors. We had a discussion, Scully and I, about who our neighbor is. Because he said, I don't know all my neighbors yet. You see, his family uh, recently bought a home, and, and so they're living somewhere else. And so we talked about who a neighbor is. And he said, oh, everybody. That's cool. Scully's an awesome young man, and I am so proud of him. And he was so quick to understand. Next up was Tierney. Tierney, beautiful granddaughter and so full of love, just 12 years old. And I said, what have you got for me? And she said, I like 1 Corinthians 13. I said, okay, let's go there. And she began to read in verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy and does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Again, I took a few minutes to talk with her about this verse. And, and again, she confirmed to me that she found it not as part of a Bible study or part of, a, of, of anything that anyone else had influenced her with. She found it as she worked through the Scriptures on her own. And she understood the importance of real love, honest love, the kind of love that never fails. I have reflected over and over again about these three little rascals. 
They're, they're so amazing and such an example to me. I love them so much. And I think, wow, what if every Christian, what if every person who professes to believe in Jesus Christ, what if everyone was prepared right now in a moment's notice to accept my phone call and deliver up a sermon to defend their faith? A, a, a sermon to make people come to understand the hope that is in them. Huh. Uh, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not that complex. It's not that difficult. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so basic, so, so simple to understand that even children can, and Jesus said that we should become as little children. And oh, that we, the world, you and I and everyone, oh, that we would become as these little children. I'm Lance Earl, and I'll see you soon.